know this is a really long intro. Sorry. Um, I'll timestamp the the uh, the talking part if you just want the knitting. Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Thursday, the 19th of April, 2018, and this is episode six. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. How have you guys been? It's been a really eventful week here for me. The weekend, not so much because my kids went to my mom's for the weekend. So that was good. But then Monday, my sister and I took an adventure to Great Lakes Crossing, which is the biggest outdoor, not outdoor, outlet mall in Michigan. And um, I got the shirt and a couple other shirts. So those were all on Instagram stories and stuff. Um, so we did that. And then on Tuesday, I had to go to an oral surgeon to get x-rays, extend, extended x-rays done of my jaw because I need two wisdom teeth out. And one of them, um, this one, might hit the sinus cavity. He's not sure. He says it'll be fine, though. He can patch it if it does. And then this one, who has teeth that grow in backwards? Me right here. This one right here. So both of my bottom wisdom teeth are growing, are the roots curve the opposite direction than they do in normal people. <laughs> so, um, He's going to have to take this one and split it into quarters and take it out that way. And it's going to be, that's going to be super exciting. So just a heads up, the week of May 9th, I probably won't record because um, I think that's a Wednesday. So I don't think I'm going to be up to recording that Thursday, just so you guys know. Um, and yeah, having my wisdom teeth just started coming in. Um they just broke the surface. This one just broke the surface in December, January, and the bottom one over here just broke the surface in the last couple weeks. And then my top one, both of my top ones haven't broken through yet, but they are shifting. And apparently that's really weird. Once you um, are in your 30s, they pretty much stay where they are, but mine decided not to move until my 30s. So yay that. Uh, anyway, and then yesterday, oh, this is, I'm sorry, this is a really long rambly beginning bit, but I'm not really that sorry. Yesterday, I went into my local Joanne because I, when I left my other job, I was like, okay, I guess I will, you know, maybe see about teaching some places to, um, just to have something to do. So I asked at the library and the librarian who I asked about it didn't seem really sure, but had me leave some information with her. And I haven't heard back from that, but I also applied to teach at Joanne because I like teaching knitting and crocheting, so that's fine. Um, they didn't get back to me. I put that in sometime in February. I didn't hear anything from them in March, and I was like, well, I mean, maybe they're full. Maybe they don't need more teachers or something. That's fine. Um and then on spring break, I got a call to go and, you know, chat with them about what was expected of instructors, things like that. So basically, I just have to fill some paperwork and then I will be setting up my schedule to teach there, which is pretty exciting. I'll be doing that starting probably in July, I think is what she said they were scheduling for. And I will have to teach... I think I have to teach some of the classes out of the catalog, which is fine. I can teach what they're offering through the store. But she said that I could also make my own classes, which is really exciting. The only caveats to making my own classes is that I have to provide instructions. So write a pattern. Okay. And knit a sample. Okay. That's part of designing anyway. So I can do that. I think that on top of the classes that they're already offering, I'm going to knit a really simple short sock um, and have that be like call it the call the class summer shorties or something like that. That's what I'm thinking. And then today I don't know where my keys are. Um, at 7:20 we all got ready to walk out the door and I was like, where are my keys? They're not in my purse. They're not in one of the project bags that I had yesterday. Uh, so I don't know where they are. <laughs> So normally we leave so that the kids can eat breakfast at school. Um, couldn't find my keys. At 7.30, grabbed the um, 
put on my tennis shoes because I had just been wearing slippers because when I drop off the kids, I just wear slippers. So probably at like 725, I grabbed socks and walking shoes and we walked to school. It's not terribly far, but it's over a mile and a half. Um, it's like 1.7 miles and we made it in, um, the, the two nine-year-olds went ahead because they're bundles of energy. And I was like, just go, maybe you won't be late to school. I think they were like two minutes late to school and the rest of us were 10 minutes late to school. So that's pretty good time for like 1.7 miles, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, but my nephew, um, he is special needs, which is fine. He doesn't do well when, um, when the routine is broken, especially with no warning. So I kind of had to literally drag him to school. So this is all angry because I was working out really, really hard this morning and it wasn't particularly warm. It's not cold, cold, but like, I don't know, maybe 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have my phone, so I can't check the time. Not the time, the weather. Um, but it was kind of chilly. So this is an issue. So if I forget, if I just miss a clearing of the throat or a sniffle or something, I'm really sorry about that. I usually try to edit those out. And I also try to edit out my drinking on the podcast because that's boring stuff. The thing about walking the kids to school this morning, though, is my kids go to the best school. So I walked in with my nephew and he was obviously not having it. So they called down um, one-on-one -on -one staff for him for the morning. And then one of the deans got breakfast bars for all the kids because they missed breakfast because they normally get dropped off in the morning for breakfast. So they missed breakfast at school and we didn't eat breakfast at home. So um, she brought them all breakfast to the class so that they wouldn't be missing out on breakfast, which was really, really nice. And, um, and then one of the secretaries made me some tea because I was, I didn't bring a water bottle or anything. Um, so she made me some tea. And then the other secretary told me that if I didn't mind sitting for like 20 minutes, um, she would drive me home after the tardies were done. So that was really, really nice. I really, really love the staff at the school that my kids go to. Okay, that is all the random stuff that, that I have to talk about. So on to some knitting, shall we? I haven't finished anything in the past week, which shouldn't surprise anybody. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is my design sock because it's in front of me because um, it is my new purse knitting because the other project that I was working on in my purse has gotten... I'll talk about it later. So anyway, here's the sock as it goes. You can kind of see that second color in there. Um, so I'm through the the leg of the first sock, and now I just need to like reverse the pattern for the other sock, which I haven't quite figured out how to do that. So I might have to rip that sock four times too, but that's fine. And then this should be easy, just knitting down the foot. Um, I'm kind of thinking that I might actually make this kind of an ebook, this design, because I think that... Um, I think it would be kind of cool to have a, a easy, medium, and hardest, or like easiest, medium, hardest, something like that, pattern that are all um, a riff on this sort of intarsia in the round design. So that's what I'm thinking. I don't know what I would call it, but I... I really, I don't know if anyone ever gets this, but sometimes, um, especially in swaps and stuff where you're exchanging minis, sometimes someone sends you a yarn that is just so beautiful. And yes, it will be beautiful in the blanket that you're making or whatever. But the thing is, in a blanket, all of those colors kind of blend together. And I know that I have some mini skeins that I just, they're too pretty to go in my blanket. So I kind of want to be able to, 
I'm, I'm going to <laughs> design three sock patterns, I think three at this point, that are a riff on the same idea with different levels of difficulty um, for the intarsia in the round and different skills and stuff to, um, to use, I don't know, less than 20, 20 ish grams or less than as the contrast color or color B in the pattern. And then, um, you know, 70 or so for me, 70 grams of yarn for socks, but I would just list a whole skein because what if you want to make men's socks using this pattern? So that's my thought right now. The yarn that I'm using for this design is this gray color is London Fog by Leading Men Fiber Arts, and the rainbowy color is Nooch Fiber in Unresolved. My next work in progress is the Even Star. So I'm just going to assume that not everybody who watches the podcast watches my Instagram stories. I think that's the safest assumption. Um, I always forget that I want to not unzip things on the podcast because I don't know if that bothers people sound wise. So let me know if it bothers you if the zipper unzips on the podcast because I can just unzip all of my bags before I start recording. Okay, so here's the Even Star. Do, do, do. Let's pull it out. And I was. Eh, where is my. This is the front, right? Yes. Okay. Nope. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I was here last week. Um, so I've done all of this progress in the past week, which is pretty good, right? But I only have um, like pretty much a week to finish this so that I can block it for next weekend um, for the wedding. So I was talking to Haley. We were having a chat on last week, I think over the weekend when I didn't have kids. And I was talking about the Even Star and we were we were discussing it and I was like, what if I only do beating on half? Because I am now past the halfway point. This is where halfway was. So I was like, what if I only do beads on half? And then on the other half, I don't do any beads because it's 50 beads per pattern repeat. That's a lot of beads. That's a lot of fiddly. And that's what was slowing me down on the knitting of this. So, um, and the way I was doing the beads, because they're small, smaller diameter than is called for in the pattern and um, too small for any of my steel hooks, is I had them on a string. And I was just taking this string and looping it. I don't think I have any. I do have the string. I don't know if it has a bead on it still. I think I used all the beads that I had loaded. So I can kind of show you, except the beads tied on. But anyway, so I have this sewing thread in a loop, had the beads loaded so that they would slip off, put it against my black shirt, slip off this loop right here. And I was putting the yarn, I'm going to show you on this yarn because I think it'll be easier to see, especially against my black shirt. So I was putting the yarn through here, slipping the beads off of the string like this. So I have to fold this in half and then pulling the string off and having the bead placed because that's what was working for the diameter of my beads. And it worked really well. That's how I placed all of these beads. It was a good solution for the problem that I had but it took a really long time. It was fiddly. I mean, beads in general are kind of fiddly. So I decided that um, since I'm going to wear the shawl folded in half anyway, or, you know, with parts folded, I, I'm never going to wear the shawl as an open circle. I just know this about me. So... I decided, and Haley and I talked about it, um, 
that I'm just not going to do beads on the second half. And <laughs> to give you an idea of how the the breakdown of time went on the Even Star, um, I usually sit in the parking lot at the kids' school for about 50 minutes before they get out of school because um, there are no buses, so it's parent pickup. And I'd like to be at the front of the line. So in 45 minutes, I could do about a repeat with beads. Just because it's fiddly, and um, if there was a hook involved, it would have taken me less time, for sure. It's just the method that I was doing it, the way that I needed to do it. Plus, I had to preload all those beads onto string, and um, I didn't want the loops too long because then you have to fiddle with moving all those beads up the loops, and the string gets um, weaker the, the more it's used. So all of those things had to be taken into consideration, and yeah, it just took a long time. So yesterday, in the parent pickup line, I finished, I had half of a beaded repeat to go. And then, um, so that took me half of the time that I was sitting in line. And then I finished two non-beaded pattern repeats in the remaining half of the time. So that means that I could do four pattern repeats in the time it was taking me to do one pattern repeat. And I don't have to take time to load beads onto thread. Um, I think there should be no problem with me finishing this by the podcast next week. Um, although I don't know if I'll get it blocked before the podcast because that would be a little... Um, <sighs> a little much, especially because I'm not going to have a weekend without children and we're going to the movies this weekend. So I will not be able to take the even start in there because it's black lace and that's not happening. But it is, it will grow very quickly now. So yeah, or I got one pattern repeat and half of another done in that time. So it's beautiful. It's going to be so lovely once it's blocked. And I think this is a good solution to have it finished when I want it to be finished. Um, the the yarn for the body is from um, Classic Elite Yarns, and it's Silky Alpaca Lace. You can't see that. That's okay. And then the black yarn is still in the bag, of course. Oh my gosh, you guys, I had a heart attack almost when I was um, in the parent pickup line last week because I was knitting away and then I saw this and it's, you know, it's really flat. I was like, oh my gosh, am I almost out of black yarn? No, the ball just split in two. Um, but I can get to this middle part and the black yarn is Kels Cascade Yarns Alpaca Lace. So it's 100% baby alpaca. Um, hopefully there's enough of the black yarn to finish it. If not, I'll just be improvising again. I think this is about half of the ball left, though. I don't have a scale, which would be helpful in this situation, but it is what it is. So there's the even star. The end is in sight. That is very exciting. Super most exciting, right? What else do I have that I'm working on? Oh, I started the Sarah cardigan which is just called Sarah. It's not called Sarah Cardigan on Ravelry. I don't know the designer's name. The designer of the Even Star is Susan Pandorf. Um, but of course, this will be linked in show notes because I'm pretty good about putting the patterns, the uh, the actual projects in show notes. So I am, um, I'm decently far. This sweater has an interesting construction and it really fits my my shoulders really well, which is kind of hard because I have narrow shoulders for my chest size. So I usually have to go down a size in the pattern for my shoulders and then go up for my chest. Um, I'm knitting the M1 size in the Sarah in case you guys care about that. So the where I'm at right now is this is the neck. So I am um, I still have the sleeves attached. I have, 
I think six more rows approximately before I split for sleeves. And the pattern is knit with set in sleeves. So you knit the back portions and then you knit the front portions connected and then you pick up stitches for sleeves and then you knit all of it all at once. So the beginning is pretty fiddly and it's not a project that I would recommend just taking um, out with you if you like for a walkabout project. But once you get everything connected, there's a lot going on at once. There's a lot of at the same times in this pattern, but this is the third time I'm making this sweater. So I just have to reference the pattern, but I don't have to reference it every row to remember what I'm doing. So that's uh, it's pretty exciting. I am, like I said, only about six rows away from splitting the sleeves. And then there's shaping after that, but I think I could take this to the movie theater, even with the shaping, because I can just use stitch markers to count my rows and things like that, like I normally do. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Knit Picks. Um, is it? Is it the, do they make stroll as a worsted? Because that's basically what this is. Um, and it's a tonal color. I think it's canopy, but I don't remember. I don't have any tags because I knit a knit swirl out of this yarn back when I lived in Kentucky. And uh, this is all frogged yarn from that sweater. So I used the first ball of yarn up already in the top of this, but it wasn't a full ball. It was a partial. Let me see if I have. So this is a full ball, probably. And uh, the partial that I used was about this size for the beginning. So I'm not alternating skeins. I, uh, I'm not really worrying about it too much. I plan to keep this skein in reserve for the neckband for sure, just so I can make sure that I have some yarn for the neckband. But other than that, I'm just pulling out the balls as they come. I would like to make this a long sleeve um, cardigan. We'll see how that works out. If I have to make the neckband a little narrower, um, it calls for a six inch neckband, I think. But so if I have to make it narrower, that'll be fine. I'll work with it. Um, but I do really, really love the fit of my Sarah cardigan, the short sleeve one that I made out of um, 716. A special dye that she did for me. It's called, the, the colorway is called Everybody Wants Petrified Hamsters, but they don't know what to do with them. I think it's very close to that. Um, so I love that cardigan. I love the fit of it. So I just want to make myself a long sleeve one now. I have also been spinning, although I did not spin probably three days this week because I couldn't find my spindle. Um, the kitten is very intrigued with my spinning and tries to play with my spindle as I'm spinning, which is mildly annoying, but that's fine. I get it. It looks very cool. She just bats it a little. Um, but then she stole my spindle. And, uh, Let's see if the end on this is chewed off. No. So she definitely chewed some of the fiber that I had left. Oh, this is all I have left to spin into singles. So I'm super close. That's really exciting, right? Um, and I've already pulled off the bits that were felted from her chewing. So she left the fiber, though, on the coffee table where I had been spinning. It's totally my fault. I didn't put it away. I usually put it back on the shelf, but that night I didn't. So, totally my fault. I take full responsibility. Um, but then I couldn't find my spindle for a whole day. And then I cleaned the living room a little bit and moved my dog's cushion, and it was behind the dog's cushion. Okay, fine. So then I spun a little bit on it the following day, and then my spindle went missing again. <sighs> this time it was my fault, though, because I put it somewhere safe, it was too safe because I couldn't remember where I had put it. I had put it up here on my shelf. On the top shelf, I have a basket that is um, writing supplies for my journal. Or not just writing, but like supplies in general for my journal. So it's got stickers and my calligraphy pens and um, 
all sorts of cool things. And maybe someday if I have a really short podcast, I'll show you what's in there. But that's not going to be today, obviously. So I didn't spin that day, even though I didn't really have an excuse to not spin because, so this is what I have left of the singles. But I could have been plying. So this is the plying spindle that I'm using. It is, um, the, the legs are from Daisy Knits. They're 3D printed. And then the shaft of it got broken. So I'm using a bamboo chopstick, which is not the best, um, the best fix because sometimes it slips out, but it slips right back in very easily. Um, but anyway, I could have been playing because I've been playing forever. So I didn't really have an excuse to not spin. I just didn't do it about three days this week. But let me show you what I have left to ply because it's getting really close. So I have this ball right here. Uh, they're all in separate places so that I remember the order in which they are going to be plied. Ball winder down. <clears throat> and then after that one, I have this ball to be plied. And then I have this little ball that's on the ball winder. And once I finish spinning the singles, I'm just going to leave them on the spindle so that I rem remember that that gets plied last. Because I don't want to ply them out of order and then have the, the um, transition be weird and jumpy in the yarn. So I'm getting close. Should be able to finish it this month. Um, considering I used to sp spin full four ounce two ply fingering weights in one month. I mean, this is a lace. I think it's a lace. No, it's probably a fingering weight three ply somewhere in there. It's fairly thin. Um, so a lace to fingering. We'll see what happens when it is washed though. It's BFL silk. So I don't know how much that's going to bloom, but if it turns out to be a fingering cool, if it turns out to be a lace, fine. If it turns out to be a sport, fine with that. Um, I just need to work on it, right? The other two projects that I have been working on, because I have not worked at all on my um, my modular projects or my, so I don't think I'm going to show you one of those this week. Um, and I also haven't worked on my, my one hour a week UFO goal because I want to get that even star done, but I can't just work on the even star. And I do have these other projects that I want done this month. So I'll get back to those next month. Just taking a little break. Anyway, so what I am working on is the string band by Stephen West. This is where I was last week. Put on a little bit of a, a little, little bit of um, progress. I might take this to the theater. I might take both the sweater and the hat to the theater and uh, knit on the hat first. And then if I get to the part where I'm supposed to start ribbing or something, um, because I don't have a needle open for that, then I will, well, I don't have a needle in the bag for that. And I don't really want to do um, ribbing on black in the dark. Um, garter stitch on black in the dark is fine, but, uh, <laughs> I am going to take this, um, but I only have this many rows left before I'm supposed to start that ribbing. So I think I'm going to take this and the sweater to the theater this weekend. Um, it's garter stitch. It theoretically works up really fast. It's probably going to work up super fast in the theater because I won't have to pay attention to my hands and I can just watch the screen. I'm super excited. We're going to go see The Cat Returns, which is a Studio Ghibli film, and it's one that I haven't seen. So that's going to be amazing. Um, this shirt is also Studio Ghibli. It is Spirited Away, which we're going to go see in October. So yes, uh, and if that didn't make sense when I said this is how many rows I have left, I like to use a trick so that I don't have to count, which is put in a stitch marker and then on the, um, or not how many rows I have to do, this is how many ridges I have to do. So I put in the stitch marker. I don't do anything at all to it on the, um, on the right side, but then on the wrong side, I move it over by one to the, um, 
to the edge, closer to the edge, so that I know um, to the, I would move it one to the left, yes, so that I know where, um, so I, so I don't, I can count without counting. The stitch marker counts for me. So that is a trick that I like to use. I use it very frequently, especially um, in anything stockinette or garter. So for um, for this, it's one stitch per ridge that moves over. In stockinette, I usually do, if I'm doing stockinette flat, it's the same thing. Um, one stitch moved for two rows, but if it is stockinette in the round, then I move it one stitch per round. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Premier Serenity Sock in black and Drops Delights in colorway, I want to say 09. It's definitely in the show notes though. And can you hear that rattle? That's because my wisdom teeth are bothering me a little bit every, here, every now and again. So I have uh, some <laughs> just ibuprofen bottles in a lot of my um, project bags just so that if I need them. I don't take a lot of it, but when I need it, I need it. And this bag is from uh, Knit One Crochet Two on Etsy. I'll double check that and let you know. Maybe. I talked about it on the first um, podcast and then corrected who it was by on the second podcast. So if you're interested, there's definitely a link in the show notes for episode two. Um, but just a little... Woodland creatures. That's so cute. Okay, so then the last active work in progress is Maudie Socks by General Hog Buffer. And last week I had just done half of a round and the cast on. So this week I have made it through Shorty Socks um, with a Fish Lips Kiss heel because Fish Lips Kiss is just so easy to throw in. I don't have to really pay attention. The stitches do all the counting for me after the, there's like two setup places. And once you get it set up, it does the work for you. So Maudie is a pretty simple sock pattern. It has two cables running down the front and if you do a longer back two cables running down the back and then the pattern actually calls for a patterned heel but I decided not to do that because lazy although it is really really pretty so if I make the Maudie socks again I would probably make them longer it's a free pattern um, I would make them longer and I would do the pattern heel but also the yarn that I'm using has stripes and I just thought that that would be too busy. And again, mostly it's just because I'm lazy. So these um, cables will work all the way down the foot. And then I think there's a patterned toe and I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. We shall see when I get there. It's a really easy, um, it's a really easy pattern to do but there is cabling, so, and since the, my design sock is so close to being finished, that's why that's my walking project, my, uh, my travel knitting, I guess, when I go places um, where I might walk around and knit at the same time. So the Maudi socks have been moved to a different bag, and they're working up pretty easily. The yarn that I'm using is... Peyton's Croy in the Tourmaline Stripes colorway. So it uh, it's a self-striping. It is a heavier fingering slash sport weight yarn. So it works up really, really fast. I'm knitting it on size one. All of my socks are knit on size one. Although I'm really, really thinking of um, when I... When I replace my size one needles, which I have to do not really, really frequently, but um, these ones, for instance, have a wicked bend in them. They were really, really bad when I found them because my kids, one of the kids, I don't know which one, had moved my project bag and I'm guessing they just tossed the project bag from the chair onto the couch and the needles got bent at 
basically a 90 degree angle, so couldn't knit with them, I managed to bend them to a much smaller, well, I guess it's actually a larger angle, um, but a much smaller inconvenience for me. Um, so when I finally replaced these needles, because they knit fine, they're fine, but um, if they get bent again, then I'm not going, to, like if there's two bends in the needle, I can't work with that. So I just save those needles for like holding stitches for arms and stuff on sweaters or whenever I need to hold stitches. I use the broken needles for that. But anyway, I'm thinking of going down to size zero needles for um, other fingering weight yarns because I find that my my gauge has loosened over time and I used to knit all of my socks on size two but then I went down to size one and I don't think that my socks are like super gapy or anything for the gauge but I think I might might like them on a size zero I'll probably order at some point a set or pair or whatever of size zero needles, um, depending on if I'm going like a nine inch circular or a um, 32 inch cable for Magic Loop, or if I get DPNs, that's what I mean by set or single. So I have a few new things to show you. Very exciting. First up is. Um, the dyed to order skein that I ordered from Nuge Fiber. And this is Hummingbird on Midtown Sock. 75% um, superwash merino, 25% nylon. Most likely going to be something for my sister, but maybe for me, these could be cute socks for me or cute fingerless mitts um, because I don't know if you know this about me, but those are my obsessions. I like, I kind of like sweaters, they're okay. Um, and hats. I love hats, fingering weight hats, but I don't love knitting them. But I love socks and fingerless mitts so, so much. So I don't know. I don't know what these want to be when they grow up. Oh, <gasps> maybe I do know. Okay, so maybe a pair of fingerless mitts, and then I can use just a small portion of it for my design idea that sounds like what it's going to be. So yes, I think that's what this is going to be. And on the same day that I received this, I think it was Saturday, but maybe Friday. Um, I got that skein of yarn in the mail and then I got a whole package in the mail that I didn't know what it was because it, uh, it wasn't, I am waiting for one more package, but it definitely wasn't that because what I'm waiting for is bags, because I may have enabled my sister to buy some bags and then got one for myself. So I'll be showing that. It should be here this week, I think. Um, so I'll show you that next week. So anyway, I was like, what is this package? And there's no return label on it. So I opened it up, and it is a beautiful package of minis from Christina. So that's fabulous. Christina is just so sweet. She has sent me um, mini skeins now and then, and um, she sent me, oh, it's too high to reach. There's a project bag up there that she sent. Um, she's just, Christina, you are amazing. Thank you so, so much. So this was completely unexpected, but it's so delightful. I went through and I split up the mini skeins by um, color or color family because that's the most effective way for me to use the mini skeins because of my um, granny st stripe blanket. So here is one bag. And she sent these to me. She was going to make her own mini skein blanket, um, but she's decided to do it out of only opal, I think is what she said. I don't have any opal, otherwise I would totally send it to her, but um, she sent me all of her non-opal mini skeins. So here's the purpley bag, and I'm sure there's a picture up 
here's blue. So the fun thing about this is that I actually sent her mini skeins um, at one point. So some of these mini skeins are my mini skeins. Uh, this one is from Marigold Jen. It's called Yoshi. And fun fact about that is that I used up the mini skeins and then sent them to her a, a long time ago. Um, so my newer blankets don't have this color in it, but now they can. So that's really fun. And then here is the green. And um, this one I sent her. It is... You can't see it, but it, just trust me. Um, it is Zombie 10 by Fishnets, and I don't have any more of that many left over either. So that's really, it's really, really kind of cool. Um, and I just love minis in general, but it's really fun that I'm going to be able to put these leftovers in my blankets so that I wouldn't have been able to because they weren't my leftovers anymore. And she also sent all of these lovely um, warm colors. There is, there are some neutrals in here also because that's just where they fit. Um, because I need another blanket project, of course. I'm kind of thinking that I want to make a blanket that is two strands of fingering weight held double. So probably like a garter squish blanket or something. Um, I don't think I want to crochet it, but maybe, I haven't decided. Um, but I think that what I want to do is hold a neutral strand. So white, off white, gray, brown, tan, beige, black. So one of those non-color colors, um, with whatever crazy, not crazy, but colorful, um, leftover yarn. That's kind of my thought for something down the way for a marled blanket, that uses scrappy leftovers. Because once I get finished with my um, granny stripe blanket, I'm not really going to have a place to put random leftovers because I only want to use each color one time in all of my other blankets. So I think that's probably going to be my, my new, like, take that place of the granny stripe blanket, the, the functionality of it, I guess, for the yarn. I don't know what I'm saying. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know what I'm saying, but I don't think I'm conveying it appropriately. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, yes. Um, one more time. Thank you, Christina. I love all of the mini skeins. And as soon as I finish the Even Star, I will get back to putting um, work on my modular projects because I want to. I just would rather get a little bit of work done on my, um, my goal projects for the month than put something on the modular projects because I know those are going to be long-term. Um, I also haven't really been reading this week. I don't know if that's because of working on the Even Star because that is taking priority or sometimes I just go through phases where I don't read very much. They usually only last a couple weeks. Um, I am reading at the gym, but nothing worth mentioning. So... In a, a few weeks from now, I will probably be back into reading like two books a week. But right now I'm just reading a few pages here and there. So nothing to mention. Um, I hope you have made something fantastic with your sticks, sticks and string this week during all of my rambling. And I will see you next week, hopefully with at least a finished even star and one design sock finished and the second one cast on. Those are my goals for this coming week. Everything else will be uh, actually three goals for this coming week. Let's try <laughs> to do um, a finish the even star. Just finished, not blocked. Um, and finish spinning just the singles on this fiber because it's it's really not that much of a time commitment to just spin this into singles. So I just need to do that. And then what did I say the other one was? Oh, design sock number one finished and second one cast on. That should be easy. I should be able to do these three things in the next week and also put on progress on other things. 
So yes, for real this time, I hope you made something fantastic with your sixth and string, and I will see you next week. Bye!